Chris Houston, good morning. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Chili. That was uh, Brass Rhythm and Reed playing Jumping at the Woodside. Linda should be pretty familiar with that tune. Thanks, Chris. Uh, it was a good tune, and I uh, appreciate the music. Welcome, Linda. You're going to have a, a PFC right away at about 1800. Okay, copy that, Chris. Yeah, Chili. Um, first of all, some big picture words. The MMT ha has decided this morning, or this afternoon actually, your morning, to protect the option for the one day early entry. The decision, the final decision, won't occur for at least another nine, ten hours. And that's late in your pre sleep. So we need to protect that option. We realize uh, how busy you are and, and how much you have to do to prepare for that. Okay, Dave, I got the kit. Let me open it up. Maybe this, uh, this might point out a, a 
uh, shortcoming where we might need to mark on the kits an up and down uh, mission that they come up and down on, uh, just a thought that, uh, you know, can be erased and refilled in. Yeah, I think we've run into a glitch here. Uh, we did have it signed off uh, a few days ago as being returned already. Thanks for checking, Joe. Okay, Dave, and i got a couple more questions for you. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, 30 uh, empty food containers are stowed in HAB. Uh, I talked to Yuri, and he said he may have two or three more, and we got plenty of storage room in the HAB for them. In fact, they just brought three over. We're expecting up to 36, Chili, so uh, at your discretion. Okay, and then item 47 on U.S. science return. Uh, crystal target. Uh, we got the base plate and the standoff cross. Uh, your message said bolts and washers. There are no, are no bolts and washers. Okay, we'll write that down. Thanks. One late piece of data now on the HI kit. The new one should say NASA 2 on the label. It does not. And so perhaps this is one that uh, is, looks brand new but hasn't been used. Plot thickens. Atlantis Mayor, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Yeah, Bill, we're ready. CBS, this is Houston. Please call Atlantis Mayor for a voice check. Complicated, and it sounds as if the astronauts are there coming into focus, are. so to speak. Atlantis Mayor, this is CBS. How do you hear me? CBS, we hear you loud and clear. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we'll warn our audience, there is a little bit of a delay in our conversation because of the communications required. Let me just get the introductions out of the way. We're joined by three astronauts this morning and one of their Russian crewmates. They are Shuttle Atlantis Commander Colonel Kevin Shulton, Mission Specialist Lieutenant Colonel Rich Clifford, Mission Specialist Linda Godwin, and the Commander of the Mirror Station, Lieutenant Colonel Yuri Onyefriko, Frienko, excuse me. Thank you for being with us. It's our pleasure. We're glad we're here. Commander Chilton, I'd like to you and ask you to tell us and our audience what the significance of the mission is. Well, there's several uh, significant points to our mission. Uh, bringing Shannon up uh, and starting a first permanent uh, presence in space for the U.S. Uh, space program is uh, certainly one of the big events that we've done here, accomplished on this mission. And it will kind of be the culmination of that uh, event when we close the hatch today and, uh, and leave, uh, prepare for our undocking uh, early tomorrow morning on our day. Uh, the other, uh, another big thing we've done is we've transferred over two tons of supplies, uh, water, and uh, equipment to uh, the Mir Space Station, which is really a first for the U.S. program to, to bring up that uh, large a quantity of equipment. And then the other great first that uh, we did on this flight, which uh, if I don't mention, I'm going to get poked in the head on either side, was accomplished by uh, Rich and Linda here, who made the first uh, EBA by a U.S. team from uh, the space shuttle while docked to a space station. And uh, this is really a, a, a kind of a, the beginning or one of the key elements of the construction of, that we need to show that we can do for the construction of the International Space Station. And they did it with flying colors. You've all been in space before, I believe, um, except for uh, Lieutenant Colonel Onyefranco. Does it seem the same as in the past, or um, still as thrilling? 
Well, let me answer that uh, two ways. One is uh, Commander Honor Franco. It might be his first flight, but he's got more days in space than me on my third flight. And uh, the, uh, the experience changes each time you come up. I've flown with uh, Kevin and Linda before on my second flight, and it was uh, remarkable. It was an Earth-observing mission. This one had its uh, different uh, moments. Uh, joining up with another spacecraft is just, just phenomenal. It's something you, you can't ever forget. But the physical reactions are uh, pretty much the same each time, but the, uh, the psychological and the mental factors that you take back with you and the memories are, uh, are just cherished. Commander Chilton, it must be kind of hard to leave Shannon Lucid behind. She's going to be up there on Mir for quite some time. I know that this was the intent and that was what was planned, but just the same, it must be kind of hard to leave her. Uh, absolutely. We're, we're going to miss Shannon uh, both personally, certainly in a personal manner, but I'll tell you what, as the commander, you know, Shannon uh, spent the last 14 months before our lunch in Russia, and she only came back three weeks prior to the launch of the shuttle. So she'd been completely away from the shuttle program for a long time, and she just fit in, you know, just so perfectly with this crew and has contributed so much to the STS-76 crew mission here on orbit. And I know she's going to do the same thing for the Mir-21 crews, which she's now a member of. Uh, and, but again, I'd like to emphasize, I, I think everyone's going to feel kind of sad tomorrow when we, when we close the hatch and say goodbye to our friend Shannon. And not only Shannon, but, but Yuri and Yuri. Uh, we've, these guys are, are great fellows, and uh, we've all come very close up here. This will be the first time that uh, any American spacecraft has ever come back without one of its crew members. Uh, you must see this as quite a milestone. Uh, is it for you like a division between the space program the way it's always been and what's coming up now with the space station and a permanent presence in space? I guess you'd normally get in trouble for coming back one person short, but on this time I think we'll get a pat on the back. Um, but someone put it better than I before we launched, uh, another, another astronaut. They so came up to me and said, do you realize that for the first time uh, in the shuttle program you guys are actually going someplace? Uh, you're not just going up and down, you're going someplace, and you have a place to stop and do something at uh, in the middle of this mission. And uh, when you think of it in that regard, I think this is a milestone uh, in that it is the beginning of this permanent presence here. And, uh, and, and we hope to keep this presence uh, continued on, U.S. presence in space, on through the Mir Phase One program and right on into the Phase Two, which is the International Space Station build. NASA managers here are considering uh, shortening your mission and bringing you back a little early. I imagine you'd have to be a little bit disappointed losing a day in space if, in fact, that happened. Well, we've all flown before, and uh, personally, you know, I'm, I'm uh, anxious to get home and see my family. I always am when I'm away, and I think other people maybe share the same feeling. So uh, one day early is, is not that big a thing in the grand scheme. And I'll tell you, one person who's not uh, feeling too bad about us getting back early, that's Shannon, because that just means it's one extra day and an earlier occasion that the uh, Kennedy Space Center folks will have to get working on Atlantis. And as you, as you may not know, uh, that's her ride home is Atlantis. So uh, we got we got to get her back on the ground and get working on her and get her ready for STS-79. Well, we certainly appreciate you taking the time out of your busy work day to join us on Up to the Minute. Good luck with the rest of the mission. Thank you. Take care. And Mr. Houston, CBS. Thank you very much. And uh, Dr. Sedania, thanks for coming aboard. Sedania. Houston, CBS, that concludes the event. They told us to say that. Exactly. Yeah, thanks, CBS. And Chili zoomed in. It looks real good. Okay, we'll uh, bring it back out and compose it. How's it look now, Bill? You look marvelous. Okay, thanks for your help. Uh, and uh, I guess I'd like to begin by saying this is kind of a, a bittersweet moment for us, and uh, one also filled with a lot of satisfaction. Um, 
We've had a, a wonderful time on the, the uh, near Atlantis complex here, and it started off just fantastic with the uh, warmest welcome anyone can imagine from uh, Yuri Adin and Yuri Devach. <laughs> and, um, and it just has gone uphill from there with uh, a great uh, working relationship between the two crews and certainly the sense of satisfaction uh, that we feel for having uh, got the job done is, is tremendous. And uh, Ron Vega, who is my uh, payload commander, has been uh, sweating the uh, transfer both to and from Mir from the shuttle perspective. And uh, Yuri and Yuri have been working it real hard on the Mir side, and it's been a great team effort, and I think we're there. Uh, that's, that's the satisfaction part. Uh, truly, the, uh, the sad part will be to bid farewell to Shannon and Yuri and Yuri. Uh, this is a, a tremendous team. Uh, we're going to miss them. Um, you know, uh, we know we'll see Shannon again when she comes back on SJ-79, but, uh, but there's a big ocean between Russia and America, and, uh, it, and I'm, we're not all so confident or, sure, or certain, I should say, that we'll ever see our two friends, uh, Yuri and Yuri, again. And with that, Houston, uh, we'll, we'll bid the formal farewell. And I'd like to extend my thanks to Soup in Moscow for their great support and to all the teams at uh, the MCC. Yeah? I like that Ked, Ken has said some good words. It's been a very high-pressure time to do the work. We worked not five days only five days, and we maintained our regime and moved all the cargoes that we had to transfer. We have one or two cables left, but uh, uh, not very much with regard as concerns the program in general. As was told to us by a common uh, friend, the uh, commander of 76, we've flown for five days, and we just don't believe that in, in just a few minutes will be that uh, the STS-76 will go through the docking module and will say farewell, shut the hatches that are called locks. We will observe each other only through the portholes. They'll be looking at us. We'll be looking at them. And then we'll be in the base block. It'll be sad to say farewell to such a great team. I'd like to say thank you to everybody for really great work. Pass the microphone to Yuri. I would like to add my thanks to the mission control centers in Moscow and in Houston. They have done quite a bit to help us in consulting with us. It's been work well done and a good example of how we can and should work together. And uh, if there had been any barriers between us, then uh, we have managed to come closer together. We've done a, a great deal of good work, and it would be great if flights like this could uh, continue, could be prolonged for several days, but Shannon is with us now. And she's going to be with us for four and a half months, and, and we'll do the good work that needs to be done. Thank you. And Houston, if you'll excuse us now, we'll uh, bid our personal farewells and uh, finish up the last little bit of work before, uh, before we close the hatch. Uh, thank you very much for, for joining us aboard the uh, base block here for uh, SCS-76 and Mir 21's farewell. Bye-bye. Houston is that these uh, uh, photographs or pictures, I'm sorry, emblems uh, have a spot on here for every single one of the uh, phase one joint flights. And uh, Shannon, I think, will have the unique position to have her name on here four times as a member of the 76, 79, 
21 and 22 crews. Well, Chili, imagine that. Uh, one launch, one landing, and credit for four missions. <laughs>